Thank you, choir. Beautiful as always. Thank you again, Jerry, for all your work, for all your work. And good morning and welcome to Ackworth Presbyterian, everyone. Hello to those online, including Pastor Julie. Hello. As you see, she's not with us this morning, and uh, she has left it in the hands of myself and my compadre Sherry, and some of you fine folks out there. So I hope you folks will enjoy a little bit difference in our service today. Uh, it is Stewardship Sunday, but we're not going to pass out budgets and all that stuff. We want to talk about what stewardship means in a broader sense than that, and I hope you will, uh, by the end of service, see that. But first, a few announcements, if I might. Uh, let's see. You know, I got a little bulletin story to say, because as Judy was working on this Friday, I thought, well, you know, this is an example of stewardship as well. It takes a bunch of folks to do little different pieces just to put this together. Of course, Judy has to put it all together, organize it, print it, and do all of that business, all that practical stuff. But she has to depend on Jerry and Laura to come up with the music. Pastor Julie comes up with some of the specific verbiage in here. And the people you're going to see today talk, there'll be five of us. That's a lot of people just to do this. So if folks are talking about stewardship, don't think you have to carry the mountain. Sometimes it's just a pee. So keep that in mind. Um, let's do something a little... How about birthdays this morning? We've got... Some real sweethearts today. Miss Louise, her birthday is the 10th. And Sophie and Chloe's birthday is the 14th. So let's sing a happy birthday. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> he wasn't supposed to, it was last week. <laughs> I almost got by with that. <laughs> okay, I wrote my check. Does that count? Okay. All right. Happy birthday, all of y'all. Um, Trunk or treat will be October. 31st, Halloween night, 6 p.m., right here in the parking lot. So load your cars up and bring them in. Bring them in. We always have great fun. It's a great mission and outreach to the immediate neighborhood. They really do show up. So invite you to be a part of that. Um, 
Reminder, the birthday bash luncheon scheduled for November. I think the women of the church are going to Actually, prepare that. The, the, the birthday bash in November, the church has been asked to provide the meal for that. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a Thanksgiving type meal. I'm going to ask, instead of having everybody bring a food item, I'm going to ask for a donation. Then we can do the purchase of the food and preparation of the food so it will not be quite as chaotic. And, and also, we would love for any and anybody who will come and help serve that day. We set up at 11. Uh, the cold winter months, we are having, we are hosting the birthday bash here at the right. church. So we will be here. So we do not have to travel to them. They're going to be able to come to us. We will meet at 11 to set up, and lunch will be served at noon. So I invite all of us to come and be a part of that in some way. Thank you, Sherry. Okay. Um, shoe boxes. They're due the end of the month. But you know the good news? This one and the one more box in the foyer, that's all we have left. Oh, actually, we have, I found 50 more. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all, come get a box, come get a box. That was the message. Awesome. Also, a reminder that the new uh, November, December upper rooms are here for your pleasure. So get one of those. How about um, postage? Oh, yeah, good one, Sherry. She reminds me, and it'll, there's a mention of it, on the label card for your box, they're requesting $10 per shoe box to pay for shipping. All the, most of these boxes, you realize, are going overseas. So there's quite a expense in getting them shipped to the right place. So keep that in mind if you would. Um, and this is just a heads up. The first Sunday of December this year will be the beginning of Advent, so keep that in mind. Christmas is getting close. Uh, I'm sorry? Yeah. December 3rd. Um, and Julie asked me to open an invitation for ideas of new missions for 2024. Part of our stewardship month is of course first focusing on planning, budgeting, and those sort of things for the next coming year, the missions that we're gonna work on for next year. So if you've got some ideas or something that's come to your attention, bring it to one of the elders or Pastor Julie and we'll work on those ideas. Um, anything I've forgotten? I'm so glad to see you this morning. Okay, thank you, thank you. And a reminder that immediately after service today, there'll be Lauren's tea will be held in the assembly room. So, reminder for that. Everyone's uh, invited. Emails. <laughs> <laughs> I came over there. <laughs> uh, other than that, I'll invite all of you to please, as always, remember the folks on your prayer list. Uh, keep them in your, in your thoughts and prayers during the week. And if you've got any additions or changes to this, please send that information to Judy and she'll try and keep this updated for us. Uh, there are no other announcements this morning. I'd invite you all to please rise and join me in our mission welcome. To all who mourn and need comfort, to all who are tired and need rest, to all who are friendless and want friendship, to all who are lonely and want companionship, to all who sin and need a savior, and to whosoever enters, this church opens wide its doors in the name of Christ our Lord and says, welcome. In the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Peace. Sorry, I didn't mean to get all of it.
No, no, no. It's all good. It's all good. Huh? You have a hymnal? Yep. Got a Bible too. Nope. That's fine. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Well, thank you all. <laughs> and as you are able, if you would please stand and join me this morning in our call to worship. We come because we want to know God, who seeks to shape us as faithful people. Not that we already are, but we strive to be the community of grace. We come because we want to know Jesus, who would plant justice deep in our hearts. We come because we want to know the Spirit, who shines hope on all people. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come today to worship you, to give you our love and devotion. We ask that you accept our meager attempts today, that they might be sufficient to your glory. We pray that you would protect and counsel each and every one of us each and every day. I pray this today in our Savior's name. Amen. If you'd all please join me in hymn 687, Our God, Our Help of Age, in Ages Past.
Please be seated. We all fall short, but God offers us forgiveness. And He offers that each and every day. It's incumbent upon us, though, to thank Him for that, to beseech Him for that, and to focus our attention on that item. If you would, please join with me first in a unison prayer of forgiveness followed by a moment of private reflection. We certainly have reasons to brag watching God. We know all the rules and keep them, most of them. We have dotted our I's and crossed our T's, even if we have trouble with words like forgiveness and hope. We polish our trophies and mount our diplomas on the walls but ignore those who haven't had the advantage, which are such a big part of our lives. Forgive us, merciful God. We believe we are such a rich bouquet of wine, but our tangled lives often produce sour grapes for others to taste. Whether it is our pride, our achievements, our success, which we value the most, May we let them go to grasp that which all too often eludes us, that love, that peace, that hope, which Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, presses on to offer us in each and every moment. Let us not boast, but simply open ourselves to the grace, the forgiveness, the hope given to us by our God. It is that faith in Christ which restores us to new faith, to new life, faith beyond anything of any value. Thanks be to God. We are prized. We are loved. We are valued. Amen. Please rise. seated.
Amen. Once again, our astounding choir. Thank you all so very much. <laughs> no, Papa Ben, you can't leave. <laughs> you cannot leave. Uh, <laughs> we talk. I know pa Pastor Julie every Sunday, or most every Sunday, makes a reference to uh, Sunday school. And we certainly, in our Sunday school class this morning, saw real connections and simple steps revealed in the Bible of how to take advantage of that grace. Uh, I, I talked earlier about confession that he offers that to us freely and offers us that grace. And all we have to do is accept it. We try. We try. Uh, not from Sunday school, but from our Bible study at the men's group on Saturday, uh, Chip led the discussion and he had a verse that I think is apropos for this morning and I want to give that to you. I apologize, first of all, when I was talking about all the people putting the bullets together, I failed to provide Judy with the scriptures. So let me give those to you right now. Uh, first one is Luke 6, verse 38, it's on page 720 of your Bible. I have a second one, but let me read Luke to you first. Luke 6, 38. These are the words of our Lord. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. If I could ask you now to turn to page 845, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16. Again, his instruction. And do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. I think that those things are talking about, at least in part, our giving, our being open to something outside ourselves. And, and I think that's part of what the message of stewardship is about. Uh, we have some folks who are going to come up here and talk about some, I'm not sure they haven't told me, but different things that stewardship means to them. Maybe examples of stewardship that they've done. And I hope that you can be inspired by those things, uh, can find maybe a place for you to plug in a little more with our church. Part of what I've been trying to talk about this morning is how for this place that someone gave to this community 153 years ago has had a continuous group of people in it. You're their successors. The next 150 years depend on us continuing to walk down that path. The path of stewardship. Confessing our mistakes, asking for forgiveness, and waiting on God's grace. I really would like to, at this point, uh, invite Chip to come up and uh, speak for a minute. I was getting psyched up because I thought Bruce was going to speak longer than that. <laughs> you know, but uh, anyway, <clears throat> yeah, this is good. Anyway, in the scriptures, uh, Colossians, Paul says, put on then to you, his cho chosen ones, holy and beloved, put on compassion, put on kindness, meekness, and patience, forbear one another, forgive one another. 
if you have a complaint against one another, forgive as our Lord has forgiven you. And above all these things, put on love, which binds all things together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, in which indeed you are called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. As we gather, sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs with thanksgiving in our hearts as we worship. And whatever you do in word or deed, in everything, in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. If you notice, part of the theme is thankfulness. How many of you got your tax bill the last few weeks in the mail? My first reaction to that was, you know, when I saw it. I got to pay it. I mean, that's no small amount of money to dish out. But that was my first human reaction was sort of bow up against it and all. But then I had to step back and I became thankful. Number one, thankful. God, thank you that I can afford to pay. So didn't like paying it, but I could afford to. Then I became thankful about all the things that I imagined the tax dollars went to, all the blessings and conveniences and luxuries that I have, that I take for granted day by day. You know, when I look at life that way, you know, I find so many things to be grateful for. And I think stewardship, part of stewardship, is being thankful for all the resources and all the things with which God has blessed me, us. And it's, it's humbling when you look at life like that and think about that, because being grateful to what we have and for what God has done for us, it makes it an absolute joy for me at times, and I'll talk about money right now for this, when I give to the church. Years ago, I, many years ago, I, I didn't give to anybody. Everything I made, I worked, I made, it was my money, I'll spend it on me. I didn't have such a crass attitude, I had just a blinded attitude toward my money. It was all what I wanted to buy, a car, whatever, stereo system when I was young, all those kind of things. But as I grew up and matured, I recognized the blessings that God has given me. So I was able to give a little, little, little. So when I tithe and give to the church, I, it is a joy. It is freeing to me because I know God will provide. And I could, I could give you many testimonies about not just myself, but other people, how God is blessed through my life's journey in what the scripture that uh, Bruce just read about in as much as we give, God returns, not always dollar for dollar, but it's return in blessings of life, uh, wife, family. And I'm going to tell you something here that I am so thankful for and that I feel like is part of stewardship. When Melinda and I looked to retire, God found us a place here across the street. Yay, thank you, God, for oh, such a blessing. But the blessing continues to grow. We've got a front porch, and every morning we drink coffee, and we look at this church. We'll see the sun rise and hit these windows and all. And it's like uh, everyday sort of sense of praise and thanksgiving. And not just the church and the view we have. Think about the people that are here. Pray for you all. And thankful that God gave us the gift of you all, too. Our neighbors that live around us, we love them. And God has given us more gifts than I can imagine in ways that I would have never thought before, you know, taking all those things for granted. I think stewardship is taking a look at the life around us, which God has blessed us with, and being thankful for that and sharing it with one another, whether it's financial efforts, deeds, a helping hand, uh, cheery good morning, 
bring joy and life and encouragement in the lives of other people. Uh, and I can just sum up my life with uh, where I am now with the sense of gratitude, gratefulness, and thanksgiving. And it's because of what God's given me. And God's given me that through your presence, too, as we worship together every Sunday. So I thank you for being part of my life. I thank you for being part of my stewardship and the blessings I get every day. So thank you. Uh, Martha? Thank you, Chip. Okay, I'm up here to talk about the gathering. Julie asked me to um, talk about it. I think all of you have heard what it is. It's uh, an adult social group for special needs. And I really want to thank all of you, the congregation, for um, supporting that mission. Uh, it's, it's wonderful for the community. We um, have gotten the word out, so we have people um, that really rely on us to have this event once a month where they can come together, have pizza, um, play games. We've gotten really into bingo um, lately, and so that's been a favorite. And the support of the church is, is really wonderful. Um, I also, with the support of the church, I also want to thank my husband, Mike, who, when I first came up with this, thought that we should do this, I didn't know if he, I knew he would be supportive, but I didn't expect him to be there um, every month, getting the pizza, um, talking with the adults, um, having his own relationships with some of the guys, talking football, um, talking about work, things like that. Some of the people that come do work, some do not work. Um, we have one young man that comes and he's nonverbal, but he can play the piano. And so Jerry saw him the other night. And so the fact that we have a piano in there that he can come and use means so much to him. So it, it's a, a perfect place um, for us to reach out to people in our community that sometimes, um, you know, get lost and, and don't have a social um, way to get with people. They're um, range in age from about 20 years old to uh, 55. So that's the group that we're really looking uh, to reach out to. We are having our Friendsgiving, our second annual Friends, Friendsgiving in November. Um, we're going to send out some invitations. We're going to try and reach as many people as we can. In a couple weeks, um, we'll have more of an idea of what kind of support we'll need as far as food, games. We, we've had a request to have karaoke. So we're going to include that. So it should, it should be wonderful. Um, one thing about giving back is that I feel like Mike and I, our relationship, I feel like we've always had a pretty strong relationship, but I think that it has grown in us giving back together. So I don't know if Mike, you always have something to say, so I don't know if there's anything <laughs> you would like to add to this. Come on. Down, Mike. Come on. <laughs> well, don't forget you have to, the video. <laughs> We're all family. It's good. It's good. Thank you, Martha. Hello, everyone. I'm Mike, as Martha said. So I did, I will tell you a little. When she was making her notes, when she went up during the piece, I said, thank your husband as a little arrow to it. So that's why she had to say that. It all. So I, you know, let me just start with uh, what Chip said at the end when he was speaking about he lives right here. Well, I live right over here. In this on this house right here so what's interesting is chip was talking about how you know he, I, god led him here and he this beautiful morning he, he looks and all that so i can tell you in transparency when i bought this house over here i talked about all my friends why are you moving to downtown aqua i can walk everywhere i want a golf cart i can walk to the restaurants there's a lake i want a kayak i want all these things i never ever mentioned this church never and it's funny how God works is that we move in over there. Martha came here one time and I said, yeah, I'll, let's go. And now the thing I look forward the most is living right there 
and have an access to this church, which is amazing because that is not at all. If you ask, if you'd have asked me that two years ago when I moved in, I wouldn't even have mentioned this church. And it's just funny how God works that way. That now our men's group we couldn't do it two Saturdays ago. I was lost. I was like, Chip goes out of town. We can't do anything, you know. And so I was glad that to last yesterday we got together. And those are great discussions. I, I, I look forward to it. I'm usually early. I like going there and talking to the guys, staying late. So I guess in stewardship for me, and we talked a little bit about this Saturday, is giving. And you give with not really expecting anything in return. You know, we, I, I give and, and I enjoy it. And I can tell you because of the giving, working with Martha, you know, a little bit financially, you know, doing some stuff. I take care of that bush on the corner, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. I trim it up. It's, if you do, it has poison ivy, so be careful. Um, but I've gotten more back over the last year since belonging to this church than anything I can think of. And it all has to do with this little church that I didn't even know existed. I've been coming to downtown Ackworth for 15, 20 years. I never knew it was here. And now every morning... I don't have quite the view Chip does, but every morning I walk by this church two or three times a day walking the dogs, and I always think about what a blessing it's been for Martha and myself and just living in this community and having this church and being welcomed in by all of you. So, amen. That's all amen. I'm saying. Right. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Mike, Martha. Thank you all very much, very much. Uh, you see, I, I mentioned earlier, somebody gave this church to this community. 153 years ago, and we're still doing the same thing. Yes, that's all of good. That's all of good. Um, Mr. Klein, invite you up, please. Bill Klein. Good morning. Um, so at first I'd like to read a, a, just a passage from Matthew. I think most of you know this is a very familiar passage. Um, it's Matthew 6, 21. Uh, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Um, so last night, uh, I sat down and started jotting out some notes for this little talk. Uh, and it's last night because I kept on procrastinating all week because I get very nervous talking to, uh, to the public. But anyway, I did, uh, I did jot down some ideas about steward stewardship. And I started thinking about our wonderful congregation about how active we are in the community, about how committed we are in the missions field. And for such a small church, it's amazing how involved we are. So then I realized that none of this would have happened without your generosity. You know that giving is a privilege and not an obligation. You know that tithing is an inseparable part of our faith. You know that sharing freely with your time or your money is an act of love. And most importantly, you know that your generosity glorifies God. So it's for all those reasons I say thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for enabling this church to conduct its mission outreach. Thank you for freely sharing your love for each other, for our community, and for the glory of God. So referencing this passage of Matthew again, I have no doubt where the heart of this church lies. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Amen. Since we've gotten a little spontaneity, anyone else have a comment or thought they'd like to share? Karen, we're so glad you're back from New Mexico, and you have. And if you're going to speak, you do have to come use the mic because we have an audience out there, you know. <laughs> Thank well, you, I Karen. Was, I honestly was looking around trying to see if there's anybody that's been here as long as I have, and I can't really see you if you're out there. And I, I would like to say that back in 1980, that's my first time in this church, and I never thought again about going somewhere else. Never. Mm -hmm. 
And I want you to know that because of the faithful people before us, that we are here today. And a lot of those people that are no longer with us, some of them moved away, but that doesn't mean that you all are not very special, very special people. And truly, the building itself is not Ackworth Presbyterian Church. It's you, all of you. And I do go to New Mexico rather frequently. And I have found church out there, but it doesn't mean I'm going to stay out there. <laughs> Just a warning. But the church itself is what we do outside those doors every single day. So we're not just Christians on Sunday. We're missionaries every day. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking about your stewardship because that's part of our stewardship. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'll, I'll just, a final word just to say, that I encourage you to think about stewardship as, as our way of plugging in to God's work. And when you're plugged in, for me, I find being plugged in helps keep me on the straight and narrow. If I'm not engaged with God, it's real easy to follow my wants and desires. And that to me is one of the things that stewardship can provide you is a mechanism to stay focused intently on God's work here. Uh, and with that, I will turn this over to my partner, Sherry. Well, I'm going to say this is not scripted. So here I go. What a hard act to follow. My heart this morning is fuller right now than when I walked in those doors because of this place, of these people. I believe we are all called here for a purpose, for his purpose, and our stewardship with our lives, our money, our talent, our love is um, something that we should strive for every minute of every day. That being said, if you would please rise and join me in hymn number 803.
would please remain standing as we reaffirm that that we believe with the Apostles' Creed that's printed in our bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, buried, he ascended into hell. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We come to that portion of our worship service that we can approach the throne with our prayers, our prayer requests, our joys, our concerns. So does anybody have anything? I know Karen does. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Connie? I heard from the office this week. It's been a rough three weeks for Michael. He lost three pounds during chemotherapy. Mm. They're still no longer faithful. They still appreciate the things. Absolutely. Anything else, Jerry? I got really good news. Uh, the doctor's on Friday. She's got meds that she can take now. Good. Good. Anybody else? Anything else? A uh, joy um, for Lauren in her upcoming wedding. So uh, that's just real exciting. We love you. So if there's nothing else, let us pray. Holy One, you tell us through your apostle to let our requests be known to you. We come to you in supplication and with thanksgiving so that your good gifts might be received by us, your children. So we begin by thanking you, O oh God, that we are together today in your name. We give thanks for all of that that brought us to this moment. Help us to rebuild in our lives, O oh Lord, to invite your forgiveness into our hurting relationships with each other and with ourselves. God, we know you to be the healer. Come now and be a source of strength and a refuge of comfort for all of those who are facing cancers and surgeries, illnesses or pain, for each person and each family knocking on your door, waiting for it to be open. Be known to them in the waiting. When we have no words for the prayers on our hearts, when we are too clouded by despair or anger or fear or to even ask for what it is we need, we thank you for the prayers passed down to us by servants through the ages. We thank you, God, for the prayers of our grandparents, our uncles, our friends, all those that have prayed over us, even without us knowing. And we ask you, O oh God, for those of us with no words to express what healing it is we seek. Help us to hear you in the words of our neighbors and in the prayers of our worship. Help us to know that only you, listening God, hear deeper than words. We remember especially Karen and her new grandbaby, the new granddaughter. We pray a continued help for this child, always, always being in front of our minds that children are a blessing from you. 
We pray for Mylene as she recovers from her accident. Pray that you would touch every part that she needs healed from you and that your will would be done. Continued prayers for Michael and continued for Linda that her medications will begin to give her the relief that she so desperately needs. We remember all of those listed in our bulletin and all of those silent prayer requests in our heart. We pray all of this in the name of the one who came to give us abundant life, whose peace surpasses all understanding. And as we pray in unison the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. This day our daily bread. It's not temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We come now to a time in our worship where we can give back to the Lord that that he has blessed us with. We have offering plates here in the front. All right, our closing hymn this morning is hymn number 463, How Firm a Foundation. I pray that we would take these words that we have heard today about stewardship, about what stewardship is so much more than money. I pray that we take these words that we have heard, we take them to heart, that we would always be mindful that when we leave these doors, we are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. 
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.